So in class today, you're going to be using this FET simulation um, to explore the relationship between mass, forces, and acceleration. So when you launch, launch FET, use the link that I provided in the assignment on Google Classroom, and this uh, window should show up. You're going to want to choose the Force Graphs tab. Now there are a number of um, settings that you can choose um, along the side here and you can find the exact settings that you want in our uh, activity document which is also listed on your Google Classroom assignment. So for activity A our goal is to gather enough information so that a relationship between applied force and acceleration can be suggested and then tested. So our settings we want to make sure we're all using for our first test is that uh, we choose ice instead of wood for our um, ground surface here. And again, all these settings are shown right here in your activity document. So we choose ice. Um, we are going to make sure it's brick versus a spring, and we are going to use a textbook, and we want the force graph and also the acceleration graphs. So the forces we're looking at for this first activity is just applied force and the acceleration right here. So you can see there are a number of different types of forces listed on the left. For this one, we're only interested in the applied force. So to get this to move, we are going to click on the textbook and then kind of give it a shot. I'm going to pause this so it automatically starts recording once you move it. And I'm going to use the playback function to record my force values and my acceleration values. So if I just play this, then we're going to want to... Oh, I went too far because the applied force is zero, so let's try that again. I'm actually going to slow this down. And All right, so my applied force is 363. So I would then put this in here. And my acceleration is 36.3. So I would then put this in here, 36.3. And note that this is for a textbook that has a mass of 10 kilograms. So your job is to do four trials. Please don't use these ones that I just did for you as an example. So you would do a total of four trials. And <clears throat> when you are done with that, you're going to come up with a relationship between acceleration, mass, and applied force. Now this re relationship can be recorded either quantitatively or qualitatively, but the point is that you are then going to test that relationship. So once you think that you've discovered the relationship based on the four trials, the results of the four trials, then you will record what the relationship is down here. And if we scroll down to the next page, this is where you can test, test your hypothesis from the above question. So with that, you will choose a new mass. Um, any of these, you could choose a sleepy dog and, um, give that a push and record. Oh, I probably want to clear my graph so it's not so jumbled, um, but give that dog a push and then you would clear the, um, or sorry, then you would record your new force um, using the playback function. Right, so you have a new force and a new acceleration. What was the applied force? What was the resulting acceleration? And using your relationship from the above question, what would have your predicted acceleration have been? And do the predicted acceleration, does that match with your resulting acceleration? Yes or no? Okay, so that is part A. Part B, we're going to look at more forces. So this is where you are going to begin looking at your friction force as well as the applied force. And you will notice the friction value when I begin pushing this 
it will appear here. So just look at this friction value right here and don't look at me pushing the sleeping dog. And actually this should be textbook for this, um, for this trial. So you'll see here are your settings that you're going to want to use. This time we're using a wood surface so that we have friction this time. Ice means there's no friction. A wood surface means there's friction. Brick wall and textbook. Um, and so let's make sure that the simulation, so we have wood, textbook, brick wall, whoop, textbook, brick wall. Okay, and I have my two graphs still. And all right, so here is my table that I'm going to record my applied force, my frictional force, and my resulting acceleration. So now watch this frictional force number as I push. Okay, so pause that. Let's relay it back. And you can see that the frictional force is 19.6. And my applied force is negative 1545.5 and my acceleration 152.59. So all of those numbers will need to be recorded in here for your trial number. Now I will say, notice that this is negative 1,000, so again, um, force is a vector variable, which means that direction matters. This man, this thing, is pushing um, the textbook in a uh, negative direction, okay? Um, so that's why it's negative. Okay. So once you've uh, recorded your five trials, then you will need to come up with a relationship between acceleration, the mass, frictional, and applied forces. Okay. And here's a little bit about um, frictions always opposes motion and therefore are always in the opposite direction of applied force. So you'll notice that our applied force is in the negative direction, but our friction force is in the positive for this scenario. Using the concept of net force, which is the total force acting on an object and force is a vector variable, can you simplify your suggested relationship from above? So what I'm asking is that you're using the sigma a symbol, which we learned about in our last class, to mean the total forces. What are the net forces that are acting on that object, um, which would be your applied and your frictional. All right. So once you have that relationship, you're then going to test your hypothesis again. So you choose a different mass, uh, file cabinet, sleeping dog, whatever it may be, and then um, enter your applied force, the frictional force, the resulting acceleration, and what you would have pr predicted the acceleration to be based on the above relationship. Can you confirm the relationship between acceleration mass and multiple forces? Now the final part of this activity is to determine the mass of the mystery object. So using your relationships, what is the mass of this mystery object, okay? So there you have it. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. Um, otherwise, this will be due um, at the end of class and ideally before um, our next class, which I will see you on Wednesday.